I wanted to talk today to you to, about um, DeFi and uh, network sovereigns. Um, the thing is, I wanted to start with a video, but we don't have sound, so I'm going to have to sort of like mimic, uh, emulate Brian Johnson for you. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, my name is Lou. Uh, I, maybe you know me as the program director of uh, Foresight Institute, and I've been uh, the co-curator of the Lab Week uh, here at Edge Esmeralda, because Foresight accelerates frontier uh, science, in particular neurotech, AI, uh, biotech, uh, space, and, uh, and more, and existential hope. But I'm also a political science researcher, uh, and I build uh, IRL communities uh, yeah, in a chateau called Fe, uh, that a community that comes to life uh, for four months every winter in France. So this talk is at the intersection between those three interests. Um, okay, so this was supposed to be the video. I'm going to try to see if I can play it. So it's very interesting to say, I'm serious about this death thing. This is not a money grab. There is like five levels of ambition. One is start a company. Two is start a country. Three, start a religion. Four, don't die. Five, become God. And so the company is just not, it's not my scope of ambition anymore. I'm going to build a country. I'm going to build a don't die nation state. Because if I'm serious about not dying, if we are really serious, we need practical things. We need to test ourselves. We need medical service. We need therapies. And no government in the world cares for this citizen in that capacity. And so if we are serious, we have to build real world infrastructure to help people not die. OK. That was Brian Johnson by Lou. Um, there are two things that are kind of interesting in this video. For me, there is, you know, minus the sort of like slightly unhinged uh, proposition on what may be five levels of ambitions for humans, um, which I think speaks about a slight uh, God CEO complex, but, you know, don't fret, this is a common thing in Silicon Valley. Um, what Brian Johnson points to here is that there are gaps and failures in our formal institutional systems currently, and that those call for the creation of new forms of governance. But the question is, is the right new form of governance to start a new country to address this gap and failure in our system? Um, and here I introduce to you the notion of uh, new, of network sovereigns, which are uh, emerging form of collective action and governance that happen within the context of interconnected networks. And we are talking thus about a transformation of sovereignty. This is where we do a mini like political philosophy to uh, pose. Uh, intermission. What is sovereignty? Sovereignty is the supreme, the idea, the notion of supreme authority. And in our political context, we talk about a state being the supreme, the, the sovereign. Sovereignty belongs to the state, which is anchored in a territory. This is our global political system. It's ubiquitous. There is not like uh, an area on the globe that is not like under the government of a state or like, you know, a human being that is not under, falls under the jurisdiction of a state. But the concept of sovereignty, see, this idea of like supreme authority, you know, that there is this sovereign that is above the law is actually a sort of platonic ideal. Like in practice, it's already contested. There is, for instance, of course, you can think of globalization where you can be like, okay, but are the like, you know, territory lines and the borders that much like, you know, in practice, what defines like authority? And, you know, in a world that is more and more globalized, actually these uh, territorial boundaries are becoming less relevant. Um, there is also a big um, 
paradigm change with the advent of digital technologies, and I'm sure the, this community is quite, you know, familiar at least, uh, at least uh, in um, intuitive manner with this idea. But uh, technologies of information and communication, of course, uh, enable us to transcend uh, territorial boundaries and form like collective and form forms of collective action beyond government models that are based in territories. And of course, this community is also close to these ideas, but with uh, technologies designed to create and maintain trust, uh, to create reputation system, blockchains, smart contracts, digital voting me mechanisms, here again, we have many new options for governance. A lot of people in this community have been actually already interested by this idea. And uh, first and foremost among those, Vitalik, the founder of Ethereum, who, um, interested by this idea of transformation in governance enabled by technology, decided to put together a pop-up city last year, almost like a year exactly ago, called Zuzalu to explore this idea, put 200 people together in a village and experiment with new forms of governance and solidarity. Um, I chose, it's, it's sad that you can see the picture so much, but it's this, um, from this very sensationalist article, this photo montage of like Eman Mosteke, Vitalik and Grimes bathing in the waters of Lustica Bay, which is where um, Zuzalu was held. I thought it was quite funny. Um, Vitalik himself was inspired in like, creating Zuzalu by Balaji Srinivasan, um, who is uh, this, um, I mean, who published this um, book called, in 2022, called The Network State. I'm sure if many of you have heard of him, if not everyone. But, um, so the idea that Balaji introduces in the network state is, okay, we are like this idea that you can create a new country starting with uh, a startup society. So you have a founder, you have a startup, you have one goal, and uh, around this goal, you start like gathering resources, more people working on it. By gathering resources and more people working on it, uh, this startup uh, society starts to acquire new real estate in different parts of the globe. Maybe it starts to have its own um, financial system, and so all uh, crypto, crypto money. Um, and by the way of like continuously growing, acquiring resources, growing its uh, real estate, and having a census, arrives at this point where it is so big that it must be acknowledged by the United Nations, by the global political system, and become a state. So that is, you know, Balaji's proposition for a new governance model. Um, I think there was something really valuable, actually, with Balaji, which is, it was mimetically very powerful. Like, in this, you know, it had, like, ripples, and people started thinking about governance, uh, beyond the sort of like, that, that we can create new models of governance. Um, and sort of evade maybe what you could call like nation state realism. But there are a few problems with the model that Balaji proposes. Like in particular, the book actually doesn't propose a very, very strong or convincing, or I would say doesn't propose a governance model. Um, another problem is it reproduces a lot of the issues that this very community often, or like at least the Web3 community often has with um, nation states. It's quite centralized, it actually, in practice. It's very oligarchic. It's this like, uh, you know, sort of governance by the, or like uh, oligarchy go governance by the funders, uh, really. Uh, it's territory-based, again, doesn't really transcend like territorial boundaries. And my biggest concern, it's an exit-based strategy. Why is that a big problem? Um, 
if we are thinking about redesigning and looking for different ways of doing governance in the world of today, we have to acknowledge that we have major, major meta challenges that we need to solve globally, such as you know, the, collapse, the potential collapse of our ecosystem or um, arms races around the potential advent of AGI and like all of this in the context of having uh, rising autocratic regimes currently and a completely, well, you know, honestly useless uh, or irrelevant at this stage, uh, United Nations. Like the UN is not really doing anything for global governance any, like, anymore. And so if we go with, you know, imagine at scale, we all do what Balaji suggests we do, um, I don't think we're gonna make it on a sort of humanity level. And I think that's worth considering when we think about establishing new models of governance. Um, and so disappointed you know, by the, the Balaji proposition or at least wanting to be like, okay, maybe we can build, or, like iterate on this. Now we have like these minds that are open about this idea that we should do governance differently. Um, we brought with a group of researchers in governance, we went precisely to Zuzalu and within uh, that uh, pop-up city, started thinking about an alternative and we riffed a bit on like the network state, uh, used this term coordination, so, you know, to focus more on the, the idea of the nation, which is uh, the culture, the relationships, the identity part of like what links us together rather than like the state, which is more the, the territory um, and, uh, and the institution. And uh, so coordinations are new institutional structure for global governance and cooperation. That's the main idea. They are not, um, so of course they leverage information and communication technologies, um, but they are not, meant to replace the state. They are meant to exist in parallel with it and like at a different level, basically, uh, but to, they are made to foster participatory governance um, and uh, cooperation. And they are meant to acknowledge this sort of, to be a system that can, you know, if it's scale, really take all the parts together and focuses a lot on like the interdependencies. There is a lot of focus on like the local and the global. Anyway, that's the main, the important idea is that we sort of a possible alternative. There could be many, you could think of many forms of possible network sovereigns, right? This was just like an iteration, an ideation. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk a bit about like, okay, where is this actually happening in the world? Because we've been, you know, we've talked about Zuzalu, but like, what, where are we at today? That's quite interesting. Um, who has heard of Vitalia or been to Vitalia? Cool, okay. So I think Vitalia was started on the idea of like, you know, the network state, there is this one goal, uh, it's making this optional. And that's, you know, that's, that's really nice. Like that's honestly super interesting and I'm, I'm personally excited to see like what they are doing there. I haven't had the chance to go. Um, so it's a decentralized, you know, ongoing city that is located within Honduras in this special economic zone of Prospera where they have like a different, um, different allowance in terms of uh, taxation and like economic uh, regulation. Um, and that's one example of where, you know, these things are like emerging and happening. Of course, it's it definitely like not a network state yet. Will it become one? I don't know. Um, and then there is Edge City. Welcome. <laughs> You're here. Um, and so Edge City, I do think a bit more of uh, a potential proto-coordination, just in the sense that like Edge City has these um, pop-up villages, but is actually more, you know, it's not meant to like implement itself uh, perpetually anywhere yet. For now, it's still like building the community and like connecting with different nodes and like uh, building the, 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 the culture and the people and like connecting in this way to advance, you know, the, the frontier of like society, science um, and technology. 
Um, as part of this, actually, yeah, next week, for those of you who will be there, we are doing a full workshop and public conference on the topic of coordination, so exploring these uh, new mechanisms of governance. The goal of this workshop specifically will be to examine like all the spin-offs that have existed since Zuzalu, and then to make a sort of like operational plan to build like a real coordination. So from typically the question would be, okay, from what we have seen today from, you know, what technology do we need? What uh, legal infrastructure do we need? What economic infrastructure, infrastructure do we need to build HCT into a coordination? And then we can do it or not, you know, but it's a nice uh, theoretical exercise. Um, yeah, so to come back to the sort of first question, what are the opportunities for DeSci in the context of network states? Um, well, you know, you can go the Brian Johnson way and we can have these wonderful rejuvenation protocols. And I'm not saying we can't have these things. This is, of course, very important. Um, but it's not important if we are, you know, extinct. Um, so, I think there are opportunities for DSI into really rising to the occasion. And like, we are thinking about like rethinking the, the whole structure of like incentive mechanisms for science and the world. And I think in doing that, like the super important thing is to remember, you know, that there is maybe an opportunity in like finally achieving planetary coherence, you know, having like an integrated ecosystem that makes it so that we don't, you know, have this, yeah, bad way of like stewarding the ecosystem in, in general and like uh, negative externalities that we don't know where to put but will come back to bite us at some point pretty much soon. Even sooner than this, personally, I'm very worried about uh, you know, the potential advent of AGI. I've mentioned it already uh, at the beginning of this discussion. Um, but, you know, there are many ways this can go wrong, whether it's uh, arms races between uh, countries that are competing instead of cooperating within, you know, the advent of this technology. That's a big risk. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, we'll decide be, I don't know if you can see it very well. This is, a, <laughs> this is a very janky montage that I did with this picture where you have like the piglet that is gonna be eaten by the human that is gonna be eaten by the robot. And then, yeah, maybe this I will take on that challenge. Um, yeah, well, you know, of course, I think about this that actually it would be nicer if we <clears throat> be friends uh, the robots, you know, I don't think, I don't like to think about this actually in, in competitive or like aggressive uh, terms, but you know, that we can change our, maybe not change our nature, but uh, merge or uh, befriend them in a way that um, would allow us to do wonderful things, like become cool cyborgs, uh, live forever, explore the universe way beyond anything we can know and fathom at this stage. Um, that's it for the introduction of this uh, this session. And I'm really excited that a lot of speakers this afternoon will be talking to us about uh, specific cases of this also in the context of um, network sovereigns like Tristan just after. Thank you.